So now we're going to use a different tool. This is still at simonsing.net, and it's the substitution cracking tool. Uh, and so we're going to take a ciphertext here, and I created this ciphertext using the other tool that was shown in the other video to encipher uh, something. And um, we're going to try to figure out what it is without knowing the key. So we're really going to try and figure out the key. So uh, you would, if you're going to do this on your own, you would create a ciphertext and copy it and paste it into here. Um, and then uh, it'll give you the same, the same structure, the same thing with all stars, not knowing what the actual plain text letters are. And then it gives you um, these two columns, somewhat like the enciphering tool. It's got the ciphertext put in, and then you put in the plain text letters, um, and you put in guesses in here. And when we put in a guess, we'll see this start to, to take shape as we go. So, but how would we guess? What are we going to do? Well, one of the things that's going to make this a bit easier than normal is I, it, the, leaving the spaces between the words. Um, I could have taken out all the spaces and made it harder. So that gives a lot of structure in terms of like one, two, and three letter words. Um, so that's going to be a big hint. But if you don't have that, we're not going to start with that though, because if you don't have, the, have that, the first place to go is frequency analysis. And that does, it does that for you down here. It'll pop up a new window here with the frequency of individual letters. Okay, and um, so we're going to compare that. Let me go ahead and um, let's make this a bit smaller. So here's the frequency table for normal English. And we're going to compare that with the frequency table we have here. OK. So the most common letter by a good margin in English is E. And the most common letter in our uh, ciphertext by a good margin is S. So we're going to guess that cipher S corresponds to E. And then you always want to do a reality check. Okay, Is it doing anything weird in this text? Okay, Something that E shouldn't do? Well, with one letter, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, it's got some doubles. It's got a double here, double here. That's actually pretty reasonable. Um, and in a minute, we could do frequency of repeated letters. Um, well, let me just show it to you right now. So here. Um, uh, it's saying, okay, there's two repeated C's in the ciphertext, one J, and it gives you a little handy helper. S, S, E, E, T, T, F, F, L, L, M, M, and O, O are the most common repeated ones. If you think something is a Q, for example, and it's repeated, then it's not likely, ooh. So U is repeated 12 times. So that gives us a clue that U is going to be probably one of these things that's repeated. Okay, that's really quite striking. Okay, so we'll come back to that. Um, but we'll do single frequency, single letter frequency analysis for a little bit more. So there's E, okay. Um, the next most common letter, if we can go back to it, it's here, is T, although it's not a lot bigger than A. So T and A are probably our next targets, and then O, I, N, okay. So if you just if you remember eta oin, that's a pretty good uh, little uh, mnemonic to remember. Okay, so let's look for T, um, and so that's where we would be guessing. What was it? The second most common letter, um, it's looking like M, okay? And we, even before we guess that, we can look at this and say, hey, there's some three-letter words ending in E. Huh, that's pretty clear what a good guess for that would be. And indeed, if you look, it's the second to last word, uh, M, Okay, so M for T looks like a good guess. Okay, so based both on the three-letter word thing and the uh, um, this is the frequency. So we got some E E T's. We got a lot of T blank E's. Um, nothing particularly weird. It's not the doubled one. It's not that U that's doubled a lot. Okay. So, um, but it looks it looks pretty plausible. Okay. Now, again, using the fact that we have the three-letter words. T blank E, T blank E, we're going to guess that, that corresponds to the Z in our ciphertext, we're going to guess H. Now, H is not one you'd get by frequency analysis alone too quickly. Um, if you look at where it is in the frequency chart, um, it's not uncommon, but it's not one of the first ones you'd pick, pick on. But that whole T blank E thing is, um, is definitely a, a giveaway. Okay, and even if we didn't have the three-letter words, even if we didn't have the, the spaces, the word boundaries, T H E, it shows up in they and there. So 
if you've got a T and an E and something in between it that's often the same letter, uh, H is a good guess. Okay, so, all right, so what's another one? Um, we could go to A, looks like Y might be A, so let's make that guess, Y to A. Okay, see if it's it looks weird. Nothing truly bizarre that, um, oh, at, that's plausible uh, for a two-letter word. Nothing truly bizarre that A can't do, it looks like. Okay, so not a sure thing. I think we're pretty sure of the TH and the E, but, not, um, but it looks like a pretty good guess. Okay, um, now there's another page that I want to show you that's really handy. I'm sure there's a bunch more out there. This is scottbrice.com, cryptograms, stats. And he has some great stuff about most common first letter in a word, second letter in a word, most common third letter, most common last letter, more than half of all ends, words end with, etc. Digraphs here, most common digraphs, that's regardless of whether they sh where they show up in a word, what are the most common pairs? And that's something you can search for on the Simon Singh tool as well. Uh, most common double letters, same letter, same list, okay. Trigraphs. Um, and then this is going to be re really useful since we have word boundaries. The most common two letter words in order of frequency. Okay, so in particular, um, we know what we know what the T. We're pretty sure of the T. So T O two that might be a, able to tell us where the where the O's are. Okay, so um, for example, let's see. There's some N's uh, like down here. Oh, here we are. Like a T O um, M N. T O to the that's got to be a to the okay so that T O if you if you count backwards it's that so it looks like the N corresponds to an O okay and of course this is a great video to to pause at any point if you want to you know keep on going with yourself and just can't use it for hints okay so now let's see ooh let's see um, ooh O blank let's see I think I know what that is let's check. Of, that is in, in fact the most common two letter word, and there's hardly anything else. Well, or or on, okay. But um, that's a good guess for of. So that's a G goes to an F. Okay. Um, okay. Nothing really weird. We've gotten some things that like have all but one letter that are a little suspicious here. Okay. Um, oh, there's some ons, I think that I found when I looked, looked at this before. Um, let's see, there's some two letter words. Oh yeah, so this O blank, that um, looks like it might be an of or an on, okay? And if you look at it, it's, yeah, it takes a while to find that one, let's see. Um, there's another, there's other ones that can convince us that the I is gonna be an N. Whoa, okay. Oh, then that shows up here. Um, N E as a start of word that seems reasonable. Okay, but if you start looking at it now, it's it it seems a bit wrong. And in particular, like here's one T A O N. Wait a minute, a word ending in T A O N is not going to happen, but T I O N would. Oh, okay. So this guess is not looking good anymore. Ah, okay, T I O N. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Oh, also, let's see. We had a, there was a D-I-Q, right toward the end, D-I-Q, blank, N, blank. Three-letter word with a middle letter N. That's probably and. So we'd think that D is an A. So that's, and now let's, let's check the frequency analysis. We haven't looked at that again. Oh, yeah, D, that was actually a tie for Y in terms of uh, frequency. And so that D would have been a very good guess. And in fact, I intentionally didn't make it to illustrate what happens if you go wrong a little bit. Okay. Um, okay, A-T-I-O-N, that totally makes sense. Um, now it, we don't have, oh, we, we're even seeing like maybe that's confidence. Um, oh, F-I blank H-T, I think we know what that is. Um, and so, let's see what else. Um, yeah, so G should be, um, or let's see. Did I put D to A? Why not? Yeah. Oh, a Q to D, since I know where I'm pretty sure about that and here. And then that F I blank H T, 
Okay, if you find it, uh, uh, right at the start here, it's like G-Y-J-Z-M, and you can see that word is repeated a bunch. Um, so J is a G. I know I'm going a little fast, but you can always pause it. Um, okay, now we're really, we're, we're set here. We, there's no way we can't get this at this point. Okay, and then we just need to, to clear up um, the other ones. Let's see, what was another good one? Um, let's see, oh, what is a two-letter word uh, start ending in E that would be a good one to start a sentence with? Well, we would make sense. And so that's H, that starts with an H here, that's H to W, okay. And now um, it's not hard from here, but let's see, what what other things would have we not gotten from the frequency analysis? Um, uh, let's go back. Some other common ones, let's see, we've, we've gotten E, T, A, O, I, N, we haven't gotten S or R yet, and those are fairly common. Okay, and so we could look for these guys, um, what should be an S or an R among these common ones. Okay, and so we could look for, um, look for X, for example. X is pretty common. That's a pretty common letter in here, and we have not found a match for that yet. So, for example, X right here. Um, and you're going to find X at the ends of various words, X, X. So S looks pretty decent. So X should probably be S. Okay. We shall... Ooh, is that, is that U by any chance? Ah, U, a double letter. Shall. Okay. And in fact, that's why it was um, uh, doubled so many times. Shall, 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 shall. Okay. So hopefully you might be starting to recognize this quote. Um, we shall go on to the. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in f f flat. What? Oh, France. Okay. So where's that? G C R uh, and B is C. And I'm not going to finish it off because you can definitely. Well, we're almost done. Okay. You could even just sort of read it. Read it with the stars in, inside it. So this is Winston Churchill from 1940. One of his, one of his most famous speeches. Um, we shall fight them on the beaches, etc. Um, so we used a combination of frequency analysis, a little bit about repeated letters, not too much, uh, a little bit about two-letter words, three-letter words, things like that. Okay. Um, if you want to see uh, one more tool, it'll tell you the frequency of pairs of letters. Takes a minute to populate it. Okay, there we go. And so it'll give you pairs of letters in the in the ciphertext. There's not that many that show up. Um, actually, wait a minute. It's mm, I think it's getting confused here. Mm. So theoretically, this this did work before, but it's getting kind of confused here. Theoretically, it's going to give you the frequency of the pairs of letters. Um, oh, maybe it's only giving us the ones we haven't guessed yet. Oh, I should have done this earlier. Okay, I think it's only the one giving the ones I haven't we haven't guessed. Um, so it'll tell you how frequently various pairs of letters show up, and then 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 you can compare that with this digraphs. Okay, so if you see a lot of uh, two letters appearing together, TH is a good guess, or HE, and you can do some clever stuff with that. Okay, that's plenty, I think, for this, since we've basically decrypted um, this important message.